Hey everybody, what's up? Bring a few little things to you tonight. First one is they're ramping up for the Solar Max. Uh, they're looking to next year. I would be looking towards the end of this year, end of next year. So this is what it says. Dated June the 26th. It says the US and the UK <clears throat> are teaming up to fight against a growing threat from the sp space, the sunstorms. And we know we've been having problems with them. I've shown you things before. Many people have shown you and spoke with you. Uh, we know the sun is a big problem. It keeps us alive. But they say it goes in cyclical 11 year cycles. <clears throat> Maybe so. God controls everything though. For a reason and a purpose. But let's read on. An international space weather agreement between our two countries, UK and US, will expand the collaboration to protect against the potentially damaging effects of solar radiation, which is due to increase as it ramps up its activity towards a solar maximum in 2013. The US National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration and the UK Government Office for Science announced today, on June 26, that the nations will share space weather resources and scientific expertise to guard valuable power and electronic infrastructure from the solar outburst. So they are worried about the grid and the satellites and us going back into the little house on the prairie days. And I'm worried about it too. To effectively manage space weather threats, strong collaboration is required among scientists, forecasters, emergency planners, industry, and others. This would be a statement made by Catherine Sullivan, the NOAA Deputy Administrator. Uh, she is also pleased that in recognizing the seriousness of these threats, the UK and NOAA will work, are working together to understand and forecast space weather and use that knowledge to safeguard lives, livelihoods, and property. And hopefully, uh, they're talking about our lives, our livelihoods, and our property, and not just elites. Powerful solar eruptions can hurl plasma, as we know, and charged particles, as we know, into space, disrupting the spacecraft and the satellites in orbit, and we know that. When these waves of energetic particles are directed at Earth, they interact with the planet's magnetic field and can wreak havoc on electronics and power grids, and we know that. <clears throat> with a growing percentage of the global population using electronics on a daily basis, protecting against this threat is becoming increasingly vital. And this announcement on the 26th follows a series of efforts to encourage and expand collaboration across the waterway, which they term the pond. And we have uh, the Barack Obama of the UK, Prime Minister David Cameron, and our King, oh, US President Barack Obama, emphasized the importance of a space weather partnership in London of last year, May 2011, and at the White House in March of this year. Earlier this year, the UK Met Office, which is the government agency tasked with monitoring the country's weather forecast, expanded its research to include an investigation of how the space weather affects the planet. Scientists at the Met Office are adapting current weather and climate models to incorporate the effects of solar storms on a layer of the Earth's atmosphere called the thermosphere, the thermosphere excuse me, which is a region about 56 to 373 miles above the Earth's surface. Space weather is a global challenge that requires a coordinated response. This be John Beddington, Chief Scientific Advisor of the UK Government. The inclusion of space weather in the UK's National Risk Register is evidence that we are already taking it seriously. Today's joint statement will build on this and see the UK and US working more closely together to better understand and respond to space weather threats. The sun's activity waxes and wanes on a roughly 11-year cycle. The recent the sun recently came out of a slumber, ho ho, and is now approaching an expected level of peak activity or solar maximum in mid-2013. Well, we've seen the sun put off some tremendous bursts already this year. And we see some strange things up near the sun. You know, Comet Lovejoy 
um, last year when we had the uh, possibility of things getting really bad when we had common ill and then into the mixture. Uh, the sun supposedly did us a favor and blasted it into pieces, but we really don't know. Truly we don't. Uh, whether it was some kind of a weapon that we had up there that defended us from it, we really don't know. We just have what they told us. Okay, so we know the sun is going to play a big issue next year, and it, I still say, you know, be ready and uh, look towards the end of this year. Because if they're not totally accurate, they'll be in the ballpark. It's better to be early than to be late. Uh, I don't believe in aliens in the term of E.T. or Grays. You know how I feel about them. I still say they're fallen angels that masquerade as anything they want in every epoch, epoch of civilization, different times and ages. They come as something different every time. And I believe this time, for the last 60 years, and whenever they finally show their ugly mugs, that they will be fallen angels masquerading as to things in the movies that they've been planted into your minds of the idea of what they would look like and such as aliens. So, if you'd like to talk to an alien, they also have a strange article on space.com. Um, if you have something you'd like to say to the aliens, now is your chance. The WOW signal, which is a mysterious radio transmission detected in 1977, and they admit may or may not have come from ETs, is finally getting a response from humanity. Anyone can contribute his or her two cents, which would be approximately, well, exact, 140 characters, to the cosmic reply via Twitter. Well, isn't that sweet? You can tweet to the aliens. Mm -hmm. All tweets composed between 8 p.m. Friday and 3 a.m. Saturday tagged with a hashtag listed there will be rolled into a single message according to the National Geographic Channel which is timing the Twitter event to coincide with the premiere of the channel's new series Chasing UFOs. Then on August the 15th exactly 35 years after the WOW signal was detected Humanity's crowdsourced message will be beamed into space in the direction from which the perplexing signal originated. Now it gets creamy. We are working with the Air Cebo Observatory to develop the best way to encrypt the transmissions, said Kristen Montalbano, a spokeswoman for the National Geographic Channel. Earlier transmissions have focused on the simplicity, whereas this one will we rely on more on creating a complex but noticeable pattern, hopefully standing out from other random natural noise. More than likely, we'd be using binary phase codes or sequence of ones and zeros. The WOW signal is the only blip of incoming data to have stood out from the noise in the four decades that astronomers have been scouring the heavens for signs of life, an effort known as SETI. The Big Ear Radio Observatory at Ohio State University picked up the intense 72 second radio transmission coming from the direction of the constellation Sagittarius. At its peak, the transmission was 30 times more powerful than ambient radiation from deep space, prompting the volunteer astronomer Jerry Eman to scroll WOW next to the data on a computer printout, giving the signal its name. No one knows whether the seemingly unnatural signal really was beamed toward us by aliens. And despite great effort, scientists have never managed to detect a repeat transmission from the same spot in the sky. 35 years on, the WOW signal remains a complete mystery. This is the good part, I think. If there is a good part to this article. It is hoped alien scientists if they do in fact exist, which they don't know, but they call them alien scientists, we'll have better luck decoding humanity's reply. And this is supposed to be a very, very, way more advanced alien race than we are. After recognizing the pattern, the scientists on the other end would theoretically be challenged. 
to find a way to decrypt the transmission and understand our language. No small feat, but surely finding a signal of intelligent origin from another planet would be a momentous and impactful find for them, assuming they don't already know about us from past visits, or already follow us on Twitter. Well, that came from Montalbano also, her statement. Wow, aliens might follow us on Twitter. <laughs> and if they're the aliens that sent a wow signal in the first place, they're likely to be an extremely advanced civilization. So they would follow us on Twitter, right? Scientists say the signal would have required a 2.2 gigawatt transmitter, vastly more powerful than any existing terrestrial radio station. So, if you would like to, for some unknown reason, say something to the aliens, although they don't know that they're really there or that uh, they really sent a signal here, but you can uh, come here on space.com, find this article, and you can use the uh, Twitter, and you can send them 140 characters worth of whatever you want to say. And uh, we have a little Mayan stuff dated the 28th. So let us see what they say in their article about this. A newly discovered Mayan text reveals the end date for the Mayan calendar, becoming only the second known document to do so. But unlike some modern people, ancient Maya did not expect the world to end on that date. I've said that all along. This doesn't mean the world ends. It means it changes. And we know it ain't going to be for good. This text talks about ancient political history rather than prophecy. Marcelo Canudo, the director of Tulane University Middle America Research Institute, said in a statement, This new evidence suggests that the 13 Baktun date was an important calendrical event that would have been celebrated by the ancient Maya. However, they make no apocalyptic prophecies whatsoever regarding the date. And you can see the picture there. Carved blocks uncovered at La Corona show scenes of the Maya life and record a political history of the city. Okay, what else I got to say? The Mayan long count calendar is divided into Bakhtuns, or 144,000 day cycles that begin at the Maya creation date. The winter solstice of 2012, December 21, is the last day of the 13th Bakhtun, marking what the Maya people would have seen as a full cycle of creation. New Age Believers and Doomsday Types. Oh ho! labeling, labeling, huh, have attributed great meaning to the December 21, 2012 date, with some predicting an apocalypse, and others some sort of profound global spiritual event, but only one archaeological reference to the 2012 date had ever been found as an inscription on a mon monument dating back to around AD 669 in Tortuguero, Mexico. Now researchers exploring the Mayan ruins of La Corona in Guatemala have unearthed a second reference. On a stairway block carved with hieroglyphics, archaeologists found a commemoration of a visit by Yapnun Yikak Kak Kalak Mule. Hope I pronounced that close to being right. The most powerful Mayan ruler in his day. The king, also known as Jaguar Paw, suffered a terrible defeat in battle by the kingdom of Tikal in 695. Historians have long assumed that Jaguar Pa died or was captured in this battle, but the carvings prove them wrong. In fact, the king visited La Corona in AD 696, probably trying to shore up loyalty among his subject in the wake of the defeat four years earlier. As part of this publicity tour, the king was calling himself the 13th Katun Lord, the carvings reveal. 
cartoons are another unit of the Mayan calendar corresponding to 72 7,200 days or nearly 20 years. Jaguar Paul had presided over the ending of the 13 of these cartoons in AD 692. Mm -hmm. Let us keep going. That's where the 2012 calendar end date comes in. In an effort to be uh, to tie himself and his reign to the future, the king linked his reign with another 13th cycle, the 13th Bakhtun of December 21, 2012. What this text shows us is that in times of crisis, the ancient Maya used their calendar to promote continuity and stability rather than predict apocalypses. La Corona was a site of much looting and has only been explored by modern archaeologists for about 15 years. Canudo and his dead co-director, Tomas Barrientos Q of the Universidad del Valle de Guatemala, <coughs> Guatemala announced the discovery of the new calendar text Thursday, June 28th, at the National Palace in Guatemala. <coughs> the researchers first uncovered the carved stone steps in 2010 near a building heavily damaged by looters. The robbers had missed this set of 12 steps. However, providing a rare example of stones still in their original places. The researchers found another 10 stones from the staircase that had been moved, but then discarded by looters. In total, these 22 stones boast 264 hieroglyphics tracing the political history of La Corona, making them the longest known ancient Maya text in Guatemala. Okay, so we have some guys that look at this stuff and say, eh, nothing going on here. I wouldn't bet on it. But there's still much that we don't know. We didn't live back then. All this plays in to everything. And we're going to finish out 2012. It doesn't look like it's uh, been a real good 2012 so far. Uh, we saw today that uh, the Supreme Court apparently is uh, a joke enacting the largest tax upon the American people in the history of the United States. I know there are people that would disagree with me, and I know there are people that are out there that need help and need to have their health care paid for. There's better ways to do things if people were really honest and sat down and actually really tried to work out the correct and um, honest way of doing things. When, when you want to help someone, it comes from your heart because you want to. You want to give and you want to help. When it comes from a law or a mandate or government stuff shirts and elites and bureaucrats and guys called Obama to think that they're a king then it's forced upon you and if something like that is made and forced upon you it's a form of tyranny well there's faith-based ways there's charitable ways there's all kinds of ways there's ways to ask there's ways to entice but they chose not to do that they chose to make it a forceful way. Um, you can tell it's not on the up and up. I mean, each president does that. They pick, if there's a possibility, you know, retiring judge, dead judge, whatever. They pick the judges that have the, well, that they've either bribed and put in there or that have the same type of philosophical views and, and uh, that will side up with them. And, help them get past what they want to get past, such he did. <coughs> a little disappointed in, in uh, Roberts, but what can we expect? I mean, everybody's a liar, so it looks like. And then you have contempt of court, Eric Holder, we knew that was coming, he's a liar. Obama's covering up for him, it's abuse of power. Um, so, it doesn't look like 2012 has went very well to me. Um, you hear these reports of a supposed event coming in October and the military and all that stuff is to be ready and 
law enforcement. I haven't had enough time to really find out anything about it, more than what I've already heard. I'll be trying to do that. Uh, I've asked uh, Dutch Sense to send me a mail because I believe last I knew he lived in Missouri and I needed someone in Missouri to give me uh, actual eyes about the supposed uh, military practice events that were going on up there. I have not received a response so far, but I see that he liked, just like I did, the information that the Alex Jones video uh, provided about that. So I am trying to find out and uh, figure out whether that's just an exercise or is that exercise planning for something later on and what exactly would they be planning for. So. I'll try to find things for you, and if I can find new updates and whatnot, you'll hear from me. Um, I haven't today. I haven't checked the earthquakes right yet. I wanted to get this out first. Um, we haven't had any really crackers. Uh, there was some stuff, uh, but it didn't look like it was real big. There were some fives, five threes and everything. But I didn't see any sixes last night, I don't believe. Um, so I'm going to get ready to go and check that out. So it is still very hot here. <clears throat> and this old boy right here, well, he's not cutting any slack right down here in our way. And then you got the big wetness down there in Florida. And of course, you still got the burning going on in Colorado. And I believe uh, Arizona, you're going to be getting the big giant dust storm again, like last year. So, I haven't heard of any flooding coming from up north like last year when the Missouri and the Mississippi uh, decided to get together and uh, really flow and flow and flow. So, I'm going to be looking into that too. So, y'all be safe, be good. And keep them prayers up. Everybody needs them. I'll talk to you all real soon. Good night and God bless.